Shalom friends, here's a quick update on the Covenant Calendar Club Sundial project. They're practicing with sundials over this uh, summer to get ready for some real good practice over the fall equinox so that they will be ready for the spring equinox event uh, in March. And I'm collecting all the pictures and uh, data to this Facebook group, and there'll be a link in the description below this video for a uh, uh, a free shared public folder on Dropbox. You don't have to join Dropbox or anything, but you can. It's a public folder. You can join it, and you can see all the pictures. Take a close look if uh, you want to study the details of any of this data. So here's the data coming in this week. This is getting fun. <laughs> I love these graphics. So. Um, this is a great picture summary of what we're looking for for the upcoming Equinox event. For those who aren't, don't have a lot of experience with this, right now we are, uh, well, depending on where you live, uh, you know, it, we just had a solstice event. So depending on where you live, you're, you're, you're seeing one of these extreme curves at the right and left side of the page. And uh, what's going to be happening now that the solstice event is over, this curve is going to be moving closer and closer each day to that straight line running somewhat vertically in this picture, that blue line in the middle. You see the word out here at the top calling it out as equinox. So, um, yeah, I think these all these other lines that you see might just be like the hours of the day, maybe. But the the important line patterns to pay attention to in this picture are the that red curve out to the right, that dark bluish curve out to the left, and then the straight line down the middle. And you're just going to see these curve patterns slowly moving towards the straight line, and they're slowly going to be straightening out. Like if you see some of these other faded curve lines in this picture, you see it's is becoming less and less curved as it gets closer to the, um, the equinox event, that middle line, that straight line, the day when the sun is going to track directly, it's going to rise directly due east and set directly due west. It's going to cross that perfect center line of heaven, the celestial equator, and it's going to create this straight line. So you're going to see a curve uh, the days leading up to the equinox event, and then on... Uh, on the day of equal light and darkness, you're going to see this perfect straight line. And then on the next day, the curve is going to flip. It's going to be a mirror image of the curve, and it's going to start progressing back. Uh, it, well, it's going to keep progressing the same way it was uh, away from the uh, the uh, straight line. So that's a, that's a good visual of what's going on, what we're looking for. So this is um, coming from Michigan, one of the Covenant Calendar Club leaders and those who know part of the covenant calendar can recognize those initials so she is uh she's very good at collecting data at this point uh, i can't exactly see what that is but it looks like it's a pretty early morning point and that's what's most important uh oh yeah okay and look look how look how fast that okay yeah that's 7 a.m excellent excellent data point 7 a.m and then 8 a.m and uh yeah she just uh she got some good data points. There's an interesting thing to notice here, and I don't know if she just tied off after she got this point down here at 842. I mean, that's just an excellent way above and beyond. <laughs> like, if you can get from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., that's just incredible. And actually, that is fascinating, because I was going to mention that for a later slide in this data set, but I think there's something very interesting going on here. And there's more to learn from this data than just confirming the straight line. But what I was going to say at first was you should be careful if you see... Um, you should see, like, this smooth curve on the left side. You see how those lines just, like, trace this perfect curve, like it's smooth. But if you look on the right, it's got a kink in it. And I don't know, I can't see the last point down there in the right corner, so I don't know if maybe um, 
uh, maybe she was just tying off to a different point down there. Maybe it wasn't even a data point. She was t tying off to something. I don't know. But just to mention, if you do see a kink like that in your data, be careful because it really should be a smooth curve like this. Like as it comes in in the morning and as it leaves in the evening, uh, you you shouldn't see a, a, a bend in the line like like a sharp bend. It should be a smooth curve. Otherwise, that might mean something's going on, like the shadow was like too faded or or something, and uh, maybe you you just it just it becomes hard to see that early in the morning. I know, or that late in the evening, things get a little faded. So I mean, if you have a smooth curve like that, that's a, just another good thing to check yourself with. If you have a broken you have a bend in your data set like that, you might want to be careful about that. But I mean, that's so late in the evening, 742, like there's no need to go beyond that. You can if you want, but uh, you should, that should definitely be enough of a data spread to pinpoint the Equinox event. Now, the really strange thing that I'm noticing here that I can't quite my, wrap my mind around, I'm going to have to think about this a little more, but, and I've, and this is the thing that I wanted to mention from a later data set that I noted, I would, I've been noticing as I've been starting to look at all these data sets, but it's odd. It's odd that her 7 a.m. point down here is so far away and the 7 a.m. point here is not that far. Now, you can't just uh, go by clock time like and say, oh, because it's a perfect 12 hours, you should have an equal drag on that side and an equal drag on that side. It doesn't quite work that way. The middle point that you kind of have to divide this data in half is by the solar noon point, which it looks like she's saying is around 140, let's just say 140, maybe 142 p.m. So really to the left the data points to the left and then the data points to the right i would imagine i would imagine it would be that would be the middle point so maybe this point down here that we can't see is the same amount of hours after solar noon as this point is ahead of solar noon. But that's just an interesting thing I'm going to keep an eye on, because I noticed that with another data set, like, for some reason, it almost seemed to be terminating at the end of the day, like, really short on the right side of this data set. Like, it wasn't a full... Something interesting was going on there, but I'll be keeping an eye on that. I just want to mention that it's food for thought. Okay, so this data comes from California, and uh, this... Sister, I hear, was very excited to start collecting data. Uh, I'm excited for her, just, just hearing the testimony of that. I guess her father was, uh, he used to collect, uh, have an observatory and watch the, the heavenly luminaries move. But I am excited to see that she is trying a taller sundial. I think if she has the flat ground, that's going to work wonderfully for her. Um, just have to wait and see the the thing for her to start practicing with and get a feel for is she does want to get as early in the morning and late in the evening as possible so 634 that that does look like that should be late enough look like she only started at 12:30 p.m. but this was her uh, her first time uh so she would you know congratulations on just getting out there and and doing this um, but you will want to make sure, uh, eventually that you, you can get those early morning points. And, and the thing is, as you get close to the Equinox event, you need to make sure this ground is flat. It does look pretty flat. And you're going to want to make sure you have three days of data to confirm that first curve we were talking about, the curve that you're going to see for the rest of the summer. And then on one day, you're going to see the straight line. And then on the following day, you're going to see a flipped curve. And you're going to want to make sure, like maybe a week before the equinox, you're, def you're going to want to get back out there and test your setup here to make sure that these early morning and late evening points are shifting enough so you can kind of see a difference from one day to the next. So it looks like she's using rocks so I would hope around the time of the Equinox event 
that uh, the early morning point is shifting. This this whole sh- this whole arc pattern shifts north and south depending on what time of year it is. But that first point in the morning or the last point in the evening, I would hope w- is shifting about a rock's width at least. Uh, that so you can discern some shifting from day to day. Um, and I think you should be able to accomplish that with, with the setup you have here, but you'll definitely want to double check like a week before the Equinox event to make sure that you can see at least that much of a difference from one day to the next. So you'll be able to pinpoint when, when you see the straight line. And, and the other important thing, in addition to doing that test, uh, is to make sure you get those three days of data to, to confirm that the flip actually happened. Because some days with these straight line, uh, with these taller sundials, you can potentially maybe collect less hours of data and it just looks like a much bigger spread of data because your 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 stick is taller. But the same principle applies. If someone only collected one day of data, there's a chance several of those days of data could look straight if they were only collecting like a few hours in the day. Uh, so it's really important, even with a tall sundial, to make sure you're getting... Make sure you're getting those early morning and late evening points, and if you can't get the earliest and the latest evening points, then the fail-safe is to make sure that that early morning point and the late evening point is shifting enough so that you can see something like a rock's width between them. Then as long as you can see that much of a shift, I guess it doesn't really matter how many hours you collect as long as you can see that much of a shift. Because then you'll be able to see, okay, uh, it shifted that much, and this is the one that looks straight between the three days of data that you compare. So, good job with your first attempt, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with next. Okay, and this is another Covenant Calendar Club leader, Tim in Calgary, Alberta. And I think I did discuss his data before, before it got on this summary board, but I just wanted to talk about his data. This was the data that I was noticing something interesting, that pattern going on, and I forgot to mention it in the last video. But I find it interesting that there's so much of a hook above, and even, I think if you, uh, I, I saw a video of this, this footage that this picture was taken from, and I think there was a data point that was even higher than this, this 6.15 a.m. point. Like, it was way, it was so far away, it was, like, outside of the, the picture view. I couldn't find a single snapshot picture where I could get all the points. But it was way up there, and so my point is I found it fascinating that the data points were so far away up there, but then right here at the end, they're just still, they're pretty close to that stick which surprises me. So, again, uh, that's an interesting distribution of the points. Uh, it, it really does have a lot to do with solar noon, like, so the amount of hours before and after, like, so solar noon was at 1.41 p.m., and he took this at 4.15. He, he was, like, what, two and a half hours what is that, three, two and a half hours after solar noon, whereas his morning point, if it was as early as 6 a.m., was, my goodness, like seven, almost eight hours before solar noon. So um, that's an interesting distribution. Um, I guess, I suppose, if he was able to collect more into the evening, you wouldn't see that same exaggerated hook. But again, the important thing is... um, you might not necessarily need so many hours of data uh, with a taller sundial because with a taller sundial, the movements are more exaggerated. So, so the important thing to just double check, as I mentioned before, is your early morning point and your late evening point. You're going to want to make sure there's a shift about a rock's width at least. Um, and, and if there's that much of a shift then you might not need, like, 9 to 10 hours of data. Like, maybe if you're seeing that much of a shift, you might only need, like, 7 to 8 hours of data. I mean, I would recommend being safe this time around because so so many people are are either new or experimenting with with different methods this time around. But I think that's, that's probably reasonable to expect. You might not need as many hours of data, uh, but... 
um, you'll just want to double check like a week before the Equinox event, check to see, cause right now, and I didn't mention this before, but right now, and, and we're still kind of close to the middle of the summer, that shifting of, of the data, that whole curve shifting is going to be less pronounced the closer we are to a solstice event. As we get closer to an Equinox event, that shifting of the entire data set north to south is going to get bigger and bigger. So, I mean, don't get discouraged if you go out and you compare morning points and they look like they're kind of right on top of each other and you can't tell a difference. Um, just wait uh, patiently. <laughs> and maybe if you're concerned, maybe have a backup with a, with a smaller sundial board. But I, I think this should work. And um, you're going to see as you get about a week away from the Equinox event that um, the shift is enough that you'll be able to see uh, about a rock's width between your... We had a brother, Danon, in California, who I think proved that for us with uh, a little experiment he did with a paint bucket and paintbrush or uh, some seal washers in his, um, on his driveway. He was showing us that uh, seeing that much movement is definitely seems like a possibility. So good job, Tim. This is uh, just a summary of, uh, I guess, people in the United States or North America who have collected data. So the star marks people who have actually already confirmed a straight line test uh, Some at some point in the past. The uh, Pentagon shape is, is showing people who are uh, have all been practicing. And I guess the orange Pentagon is uh, the newest ones that we're talking about in this video. And then this is kind of the same thing just around the world. So really exciting. Good job, everyone. Uh, and I hope, um, you know, the more people that do this, the better. We're trying to pinpoint the start of the Creator's International Dateline. And uh, the more gaps we have between truth seekers, anyone who lives in that gapped region, if that's where the International Creator's International Dateline lands, it's it's going to be tricky. Uh, the, nothing nothing beats being able to make the confirmation for yourself. But with so many people working together, it is possible, I believe, to uh, to to pretty accurately pinpoint uh, where. It, at least a single time zone where it's going to land. And it was just kind of interesting this past spring, it seemed to land right in the middle of the United States. But um, we will, uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted on this. And I hope anyone watching this, please feel free to join. Either uh, let us know in the comments below this video or join the Facebook group or reach out to me at a voice of truth and love at gmail.com. All right. May Abba bless you as you continually seek out his truth and love with a pure heart.